Hi everyone and welcome back to another Excel Academy YouTube video. Today we are going to be looking at GIS which stands for Geographic Information System and this is an important skill that is assessed in IB Geography Paper 2. So let's first ask ourselves what is GIS? GIS is an acronym for Geographic Information System. A GIS system uses computers and software to gather manage and analyze data based on geography and visualizes the data on a map. GIS mapping software uses spatial data to create maps and 3D models out of layers of visual information, which reveals patterns and relationships in the GIS data. So some examples of GIS layers include vegetation, relief, roads, hydrography, and elevation. So let's take a look at GIS concepts, the first of which being remote sensing. Remote sensing is the collection and interpretation of information about the environment and the surface of the earth from distant, i.e. remote places, via an aircraft or satellite. And we have two subtypes of remote sensing, the first of which being passive remote sensing. So passive remote sensing is a system with sensors that uses energy signals radiating from Earth to capture data. So basically, we are using the, an external source of radiation, for example, the sun, in passive remote sensing. In active remote sensing, a system that beams its own radiations towards a target landscape on Earth Sensors on the satellite then measure the radiation which, target, which the target landscape reflects back to the satellite. So basically, in active remote sensing, the system uses its own source of light. Let's take a look at resolution. And resolution refers to the detail or the sharpness of an image. The clarity of the image is determined by the number of pixels. And we need to understand that pixels are the smallest unit in which data is stored. So therefore, more pixels lead to a higher resolution image and less pixels result in a lower resolution image. And we can see this illustrated here in this image below. We can see that there are less pixels in this low resolution image. And we can see on the right side here that there are more pixels and therefore this picture on the right is a high resolution image. Let's also look at data management. Computers are used with special software programs that handle and manage the data. GIS is dependent on a database management system. This is a computer system that can store, retrieve and reorganize attribute information. So spatial data is data that describes the location of places using coordinates, right? And this is very important. It describes the location of places using coordinates. Attribute data is data that describes geographic features on a map. For example, the population of a city, the mean annual rainfall of the city, average winter temperature, or the average summer temperature. So attribute describes geographic features on a map. So let's now turn our focus towards how we store GIS data. And the first method is the raster method. So the raster method consists of pixels and a graphic is made up of a large number of pixels with each pixel having a location and color value in a grid format. Aerial photos and satellite images are taken using the raster method and are in a raster format. So do take note of this point here. The second method is the vector method. So the vector method uses points, lines and areas inside polygons to define data. Vector graphics are used to represent roads, rivers and housing. And so vector data is made up of three data types. Points, which you can see here, uh, an example of which being a spot height, a trig beacon, a tree, a lighthouse, a post office, or a reservoir. 
Then we can see here uh, a line data type. All right, so a line, an example of a line data type will be a street, a river, a railway line, a hiking trail, or contour lines. And then finally, the third type or data type is a polygon. So for example, a dam, cultivated land, industrial area, diggings, golf course, a park, or a recreational area. And so a polygon is basically a series of coordinates that form a boundary, right? The 2D center that is surrounded by the boundary is called an area. So data standardization ensures that data is able to be shared in a universally compatible manner. GIS software can read and write many different formats. And data standardization also establishes trustworthy data sources for use by all. Data sharing results in capturing high resolution images and data, which is an expensive process. Maintaining and storing this data is also expensive. Therefore, it is important for information to be shared. Standardization makes the ability to share data so much easier. Now, an important skill that is assessed in IB Geography Paper 2 is buffering, and you have to know how to apply the skill. So when lines are drawn to visualize a protective boundary around or between a geographical feature is known as a buffer zone. And so usually this geographical feature is a hydrographic feature or a fluvial feature. So for example, a dam. Buffering can help in assessing flood damage, future business locations, suitable farmland, and determining the number of students within a school's catchment area. So this, uh, these four bullet points can help you in answering a question that asks you, you know, what the purpose of or what the significance of buffering would be. And so I really do hope that these four points help you in answering a question in IB paper two. When drawing a buffer zone, you must follow the instructions given. Usually the buffer zone needs to be drawn at a fixed distance around the feature. Like so, uh, usually they would ask you to draw a buffer zone around a dam, for example, and this, and they'll ask you to, uh, why, why is buffering important? And then you can answer by saying, uh, you know, you can assess flood damage and see how many houses are affected if, the dam were to expand, etc., etc. And it's also important for you to put in a key indicating the buffer zone. So, for example, if they tell you to draw a buffer zone of one centimeter around the dam, you need to indicate that key uh, in answering the question. So, the application of GIS. Population modeling uses GIS to create maps and models of the location and distribution of people. Some cities use GIS modeling to manage water and power networks. GIS is used for urban and town planning. It is also used for identifying areas experiencing drought, and it's also used for planning of future food demand. Again, it's also used for disaster management Areas prone to earthquakes or volcanic eruptions are monitored using remote sensing technologies and GIS. And finally, it's used by businesses to assess target market and efficacy of marketing campaigns. Here are some references that I took the information from in preparing for this video. And thank you so much again for tuning in to another Excel Academy YouTube video. Please like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe to the channel for more content to come.